So if we look at the, the roots of, uh, of grasses, we see that this is just from an experiment with these. Those ones have been kept short in a glass house situation. Those ones have been let to grow a bit longer, those have been let to grow a bit longer, and that one's just been left to grow. Look, at all we see is what's above ground. When you're managing your, um, your plants, it doesn't matter whether it's pasture or what it is that you're managing, remember that you have to have as much photosynthetic capacity as possible. You have to have as much green leaf there as possible because that is what is going to drive the health of your soil. If you don't have very much leaf there, you cannot have very many roots there because the roots have to get all of their energy from the leaves of the plant. You cannot have um, a big root system like this if you've only got a couple of leaves like that. So the soil, if, you, if it had this many roots in it at the time of European settlement, and then all of a sudden we start grazing everything into the ground all the time and it goes from being looking like that on the right hand side to that on the left hand side, what is that going to do to the soil biology? Where do the things that live in the soil get their energy from? You tell me, where do the things that live in the soil, what sort of energy are they using? Where do they get, where do we get our energy from? Ultimately, the sun. So how are you going to get sunlight energy into the soil? What has to happen first? It's coming as light. It's coming to earth as light. Yeah, photosynthesis. We have to transform it from light energy into biochemical energy and that's what happens in the miracle of photosynthesis. That can only happen in a green leaf. So if the ground is bare, like in that West Australian example I showed you, there is not going to be any photosynthesis. None of that light is going to be transformed to biochemical energy. What happens if it's not transformed to biochemical energy? What, what happens when, if you put your hand out on a sunny day and sunlight hits your hand, what do you feel? Heat gets transformed to heat energy. So if there isn't any ground cover and that light energy hits bare soil, it's going to get transformed into heat. And what does soil ha what happens to soil if it happens to have a bit of moisture in it and it heats up? What happens to the moisture? Evaporates, yes. That energy is used to evaporate the water. So whenever we're not having light energy being intercepted by a green plant, it's going to become heat energy and then it's going to cause evaporation. And in actual fact, if you have an area of bare ground and another area right next to it with some perennial grass plants on it. And I'm talking about perennial grasses because that was the main vegetation type, according to Bill Gamage, that we had in Australia at the time of settlement. We now have heaps more trees than we had 200 years ago. Um, and you measure the moisture content under that bare ground and under that grass over, say, a period of 12 months or something, you'll find it's always moister under the grass plant. What have we been told? Plants transpire water, they dry the soil out. That is another myth. It will always be moister under the grass plant. And there's lots of reasons for that. <coughs>